strong Pokemon, weak Pokemon. There are objective metrics to determine these things. You guys absolutely loved last week's video on the weakest Pokemon from each generation. So, obviously, this week, we need to rank the evolutions. Nah, I'm kidding. 2015 Pokemon YouTube was a completely different beast. You could just do that back then and people would watch. This week, we'll be discussing which Pokemon from each generation is the strongest. With the weakest Pokemon, it's pretty universal as to which one of them was the worst across both VGC and singles play, but when determining which are the strongest, it can vary quite a bit. I mean, Incineroar is the greatest VGC Pokemon of all time, but in Smogon singles, it's in RU, right in the middle of the pack, bordering on being kinda bad. This is because the qualities that make Incineroar strong in doubles don't translate well to singles play. There's not exactly a high demand for a rock weak Pokemon that pivots a lot in a metagame where stealth rocks are everywhere. So for this video, I'll be considering which Pokemon is the strongest overall, balancing their viability in both singles and doubles. So spoilers, Incineroar won't be my pick for generation 7. Luckily, there are plenty of Pokemon that have high viability in both formats. I mean, stats are stats, right? Also, this list is considering their modern iterations, so while a Pokemon may have been awful when it was first introduced, if it received buffs over time that granted it greater viability, it can make this list. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into the video. Oh, also, before we start, I won't be considering any restricted legends like Mewtwo or Rayquaza for this list, or any mythical Pokemon, because they usually aren't legal in VGC except in very special occasions. And if I did consider those Pokemon, the list would be consisted of entirely these Pokemon, I mean, they're legendaries, so. We'll be talking about regular Pokemon and lesser legendaries, like the Lake Trio. Funny enough, even if Mewtwo were considered for this list though, it wouldn't hold a candle to Gen 1's strongest Pokemon. Dragonite is a Pokemon that just seems to get better with age. As the first pseudo, I mean, powerhouse Pokemon, that's the official name, I'm not kidding, it's got a leg up on the competition with 600 base stat total. As a flying dragon type, not only does Dragonite have excellent offensive stab options, but its coverage moves are both numerous and powerful. It's got access to a variety of physical attacks like Extreme Speed, Ice Spinner, Low Kick, and Outrage to use its base 134 attack stat. And while players originally believed that it gaining access to Multiscale, an ability which halves damage when at full HP, would be the buff that saved this Pokemon, it turns out that its original ability of Inner Focus was the key to its success. In Generation 8, Inner Focus, an ability which prevents flinching, was buffed to make the user immune to Intimidate. In VGC, this is an absurdly powerful ability for a priority spammer like Dragonite. This caused Choice Band Terra Normal Extreme Speed Dragonite to not only be a super powerful attacker in VGC next to Pokemon like Chen Pao, but a terrifying sweeper in Smogon singles. Assault Vest is yet another powerful option for Dragonite as it allows for it to switch between Terra Normal E Speed and other attacks like Ice Spinner, which allows for Dragonite to clear Psychic Train from the field, which would otherwise block its extreme speeds. Dragonite serves as a veteran Pokemon which not only improved over time, but remains a dominant threat. Also, he's pretty cute. Also, Dragonite drinks gamer subs. Bam, ad time. This channel is partnered with Gamer Subs. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamer Subs through my link in the description down below or with code MoxieBoosted at checkout for 10% off. Gamer Subs is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Frankly, there's no need to hype up my Gen 2 pick. Like I said in last week's video, Gen 2 is kind of underpowered. Tyranitar carries Gen 2 harder than LeBron James carries literally any team he's ever been on. Since Gen 3, Tyranitar has had access to the ability Sandstream, which whips up a Sandstorm that not only deals chip damage to any Pokemon which is not a Rock, Steel, or Ground type, but grants Rock types like itself a 50% increase in special defense. So Tyranitar basically has a built-in Assault Vest with no drawback. Also, he can put an Assault Vest on his Assault Vest. And if he's next to a Ting Lu, he could put an Assault Vest on his Assault Vest and have an Assault Vest passively be active on the field. Pretty cool, right? As a Rock Dark type, Tyranitar has a massive weakness to fighting types. But this has basically never held it back, as the value of setting a Sandstorm and spamming Rock Slide while enabling partners with the ability Sand Rush makes it a difficult Pokemon to compete with. On top of that, Gen 9 Tyranitar gained access to Terrastalization to allow for it to change its type. Fighting types will just mash close combat into this thing only to be met with Go Go Gadget flying move. Sand teams have been historically quite good in both singles and VGC, and Tyranitar in doubles is especially strong due to Rock Slide Spam being one of the most frustrating things to play against as the opponent is constantly threatening a double flinch. And with partners like Excadrill and Rillaboom at its side, it's become an increasingly solid pick for even non-sand-based teams. Bro's just goaded. 
But where Tyranitar was born talented, the next pick had to work for their current success. And by work, I mean have it handed to them on silver platter on the beaches of Hawaii. This is definitely going to break some of your ankles, but the strongest Gen 3 Pokemon across both singles and VGC is without a doubt Pelipper. Oh, the Pelipper. So smoothly doth he crest a wind god. Okay, so this might confuse a whole lot of people who haven't kept up with Pokemon for a while, but Pelipper started off life as a very forgettable flying water type with basically no niche to its name. It's got solid defenses and a good special attack stat, but not much past that. In Gen 7, Game Freak gave this man the deal of a lifetime. Pelipper, I can grant you control over the storms, all for your precious move. Secret power. Are you serious? And just like that, Pelipper now has Drizzle as an ability, making it the only weather setter with access to Tailwind and U-Turn. Tailwind obviously being the thing granting it a leg up on Politoed and Doubles, and U-Turn making Pelipper capable of pivoting out immediately to a Swift Swim Sweeper to abuse the rain in singles. On top of all this, Pelipper became a much more threatening offensive Pokemon, as its water moves now have an extra 50% power, and it literally can't miss the move Hurricane anymore since rain is active. Wide Guard also makes it a super powerful pick in restricted formats, allowing for it to wall the likes of Calyrex Ice, Calyrex Shadow, and opposing Kyogre to protect its partner Pokemon. It's so good, it even won the 2024 North American International Championship. Oh, the Pelipper. How gracefully doth he crest the team builder. Gen 4 is actually pretty cut and dry, Heatran. Never has there been a more consistent Pokemon in tournaments since it was released. Look, it's the first straight up legendary Pokemon on the list, and it's a bulky fire steel type with immunity to fire moves. That's pretty solid. I mean, it's got legendary stats. 96 HP, 106 defense, 130 special attack, 106 special defense, and 77 speed. This guy was difficult to KO with leftovers recovery in previous games to Gen 9, but this thing can now turn into a grass type. Let me lay this out for you. You have a Landorus and an Urshifu, both of which are staring down a Heatran, both of which have the opportunity to KO it with a single move. You double into it with Surging Strikes and Earth Power, but uh-oh, now it's a grass type. Both of these moves are now resisted and just bounce off the dude. Even if you had a Pokemon which could hit the grass type for super effective damage, unless the Heatran has already changed into a grass type, you're basically gambling that turn. As a fire steel type with a fire immunity, everything that hits grass for super effective damage just doesn't touch Heatran before it terras. It resists ice and flying moves and is totally immune to poison and fire. Have fun playing the 50-50. But in all seriousness, the tools at its disposal are nothing to scoff at. It hits hard, it's got tools like Earth Power, Magma Storm, Taunt, and Stealth Rocks. It's just a workhorse of a Pokemon if there's ever been one. Also, it's a frog. Speaking of workhorse Pokemon, our next pick is Landorus. And before we get into this guy, I need to clarify something. Upon the release of Generation 5, the forces of nature were criticized for just straight up being dudes. But this is not a man. Yes, he is featherless, but he is notably not bipedal. This is not a man. This is a goat. However, we are not discussing this form. We're talking about his fursona. Landorus Therian has been the face of competitive Pokemon for generations. Despite its four times ice weakness as a flying ground type, this dude has never taken an L. Wait, don't look at that. Okay, maybe he's not as good as he used to be, but this guy has a legacy. As a bulky and decently fast Pokemon with phenomenal 145 attack stat, Landorus can do it all. In singles, it can click Stealth Rocks and pivot out with U-Turn while threatening major damage with Earthquake and remove items with Knock Off. It can even set up and sweep with Swords Dance. It's literally never been below OU in Smogon singles since it was released, and its viability translates super well into its VGC career. If Intimidate is a nice bonus in singles, it's a whole personality in doubles. Scarf Landorus has been one of the most consistent Pokemon of all time in tournaments. Landorus not only keeps its phenomenal tools in U-Turn and Stomping Tantrum from singles, but it runs Rock Slide and VGC to threaten flinches on slower Pokemon. And with Gen 9, it gained Flying Stab in Terra Flying Terra Blast, which not only removes all of its ground type weaknesses, but gives it a super powerful flying type attack with a 2 times multiplier on damage since it was already a flying type before it terrored. Its pivoting also allows for partners like Rillaboom and Urshifu to hit the field at the most opportune of times and gives the player great board positioning options. I'm ride or die for this guy, even if he has a lot of haters. Some people just don't like to see people be happy and successful. I love you, Landorus. You know, the more I think about my Generation 6 pick, the more I realize that a lot of these dudes just didn't age that well, including my pick. But regardless, this bird has some sauce. Probably Ty Curry, that's the best one at Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, so Townflame upon release was frankly stupid. You wouldn't expect a fire flying type with a mediocre stat spread of 78 HP, 81 attack, 71 defense, 74 special attack, 69 special defense, and 126 speed to be all that viable. 
but Talonflame defied its low potential by having one of the most broken abilities ever introduced to Pokemon. In Generation 6, its ability Gale Wings granted plus one priority to all flying type moves. This meant that it had priority on Tailwind, Roost, then the most powerful priority move in history in plus one Brave Bird. This was frankly ridiculous. Talonflame, in singles, was so good that it was given the nickname of Smogon Bird. Its priority recovery and flying type attacks made it so it didn't even really need to invest in speed, being able to run a bulk up set with Roost and priority in acrobatics. In doubles, it was just as powerful, having access to priority Tailwind to give its partners double speed for three turns. This was so busted that in Generation 7, Talonflame received a nerf by making Gale Wings only grant priority when it was at full health. While you might believe that this would ruin Talonflame forever, it remains a powerful Tailwind option in Generation 9, since it can not only use priority Tailwind on turn 1, but it can also run a bulky set with Taunt and will -Wist to prevent the opponent from dealing a lot of damage and using important moves like Trick Room or Spore. And while its singles viability has decreased significantly over the years, landing it in NU, it's the Gen 6 Pokemon with the best track record across both formats. Gen 7 introduced a number of ridiculously powerful Pokemon into both singles and VGC. Tapu Koko dominated Generation 7 VGC with its fast electric moves and ability to set terrain. It was also a menace in OU with the ability to defog, set screens, and pivot with either U-turn or Volt Switch, then go on the offensive whenever it was needed. Kartana was yet another Pokemon whose viability was consistent across both singles and VGC, despite its 4 times weakness to fire. Beast Boost allowed for Kartana to sweep through entire teams by boosting its speed after a Swords Dance, or just straight up snowballing its attack stat. But for my money, Tapu Fini is without a doubt the best Pokemon to come out of Alola. As a Water Fairy type, it has one of the best type combinations possible in Pokemon. Not only does it have phenomenal bulk with 70 HP, 115 defense, and 130 special defense, but with its 85 speed and 95 special attack, it can opt into a choice spec set to be offensive when it's needed. But the trait that puts Tapu Fini above every other Gen 7 Pokemon is its ability of Misty Surge. Misty Surge sets Misty Terrain on the battlefield. This terrain prevents all status conditions from being inflicted, so it can stop partners from being put to sleep by Amoongus. And with its wide move pool, it's kind of a Swiss army knife. Taunt allows for it to prevent Trick Room, Ice Wind provides the team some speed control, and Combine lets it set up and spam Muddy Water to cause your opponent to break their switch after their third accuracy drop. I mean, if they snap the switch, you just automatically win. It's, it's literally in the rules. I'm not kidding. Like that. Well, actually, maybe, I, is it in the rules? If you snap your switch, do you lose? Like, you can't play the game anymore, but I like to imagine that that's written in the rules. If you, like, break your switch, the other person wins. That's gotta be somewhere. All right. This Pokemon is so strong and well-liked that its exclusion from Generation 9 has left VGC players missing it and awaiting its return in Generation 10. Please come back, Tapu Fini. He can't treat you how I treat you. Okay, Generation 8. Urshifu. It's Urshifu. There's no competition. It's not close. It's, it, it's just, it's Urshifu. Urshifu Rapid Strike is so broken that it's by far the most used water type in Generation 9 VGC. It's just straight up banned in smoke on singles, so there's that. Urshifu Rapid Strike has a multi-hit water move which crits every single turn, meaning that it bypasses screens, intimidate, and defense boost. And its ability Unseen Fist lets it bypass protect entirely. So what's the defensive play? You set up Sun? You use Wo Chen? Well, yes, actually, but the point is that this Pokemon has such limited counterplay that running any other water type is kind of not advised. It's just so far ahead of the competition that I could say it's going to win the World Championships this year with practically no worry in my heart that it might not. Urshifu's exclusion from the upcoming Regulation H metagame has led to people running Gyarados, Palafin, and even Paldean Tauros to fill its role on the team. I mean, they could have run it before, but then they'd be at a massive disadvantage because these Pokemon are notably not Urshifu. If you've never used this Pokemon, I implore you to try and use it today. You don't realize just how much easier life becomes when you do. It's it's just that good. 130 attack, 97 speed. You can run Scarf, you outspeed, Calyrex Shadow. This isn't even on the script. I'm just riffing at this point. Like, I can talk about this Pokemon all day. It's just broken, though. Now, Gen 9 is one of the most power crept generations we've ever had, which makes sense because it's the newest one. It should be the most power crept. And I think you already know which Pokemon we're going to have to put here. In the sea of powerful Paradox Pokemon and Legendaries, Fluttermane remains one of the most consistent Pokemon ever created. As a Ghost Fairy type, it's got access to every good trait you want out of a Glass Cannon. 55 HP, 55 Attack, 55 Defense, 135 Special Attack, 135 Special Defense, 135 Speed, and Protosynthesis. Also Moonblast. Like, on paper, this seems balanced because it's not going to live any physical hits, it's going to drop to a neutral attack, but here's the thing. The good stats on it, the 135s, those are so high that it doesn't really need to invest all that much into them, and it can focus on investing into its weaker stats to make sure it's bulky enough to live ridiculous attacks like Urshifu Rapid Strike's Surging Strikes. 
Booster Energy also allows for it to instantly become the fastest Pokemon in the field and support its partners with a wide variety of moves like Taunt, Icy Wind, and even on occasion, Trick Room. And since it's a Ghost Fairy type, it's neutral to dark moves like Sucker Punch. It can actually Terrastalize into a pure Fairy type to not only make it resist Sucker Punch, but also make its Moonblast into a nuke. This thing has way too many great partners. It pairs well with Incineroar, Urshifu, Coridon, Chi Yu, Tornadus, the list goes on. It's genuinely one of the easiest Pokemon to fit onto a team because of how many roles it can fill while still being an offensive threat. And its numerous regional championships won within the year of its release is a testament to its power. I actually have a whole video going over it that you can check out right after this one. Oh, also it's Banda Ubers and Smogon singles, so there's that. Okay, with our nine most powerful Pokemon selected, we can move on to our little tier list ranking so I can determine how good they are in comparison to one another. Bear in mind, a D tier ranking here still means that they're strong because this list is in comparison to other broken Pokemon, so let's get into it. In D tier, we have just Talonflame. Yes, Talonflame is one of the most consistent Generation 6 Pokemon, but Gen 6 Pokemon haven't really aged that well. Sylveon was its only real competition to be honest, and while it was close, neither of these two are even close to being as busted as literally everything else on this list, as they're somewhat power crept nowadays. But Talonflame did win a regional in Generation 9. In C tier, we have Heatran and Tyranitar. These two Pokemon are some of the greatest Pokemon to ever grace VGC or Smogon singles, but over time Tyranitar has slowly fallen to the wayside, and shamefully enough, it became Yu Yu and Smogon singles for the first time ever. It's still a menace, but its current place in the metagame is nowhere near the dominance it held in previous generations. Heatran is still very much OU and a solid answer to Pokemon like Volcarona but that doesn't really matter anymore now that Volcarona's been banned to Ubers. But its traits, as strong as they are, aren't as in demand in today's meta. In VGC, it's fallen in usage due to other fire types like Chi Yu or Incineroar being preferred over it in most archetypes. It is without a doubt still a strong option though. In B tier, we have Dragonite. Once again, possibly the Pokemon who has aged the best over the years. Its access suit ability, which prevents Intimidate drops and flinches, combined with Terranormal Extreme Speed, makes it a super reliable workhorse offensive Pokemon in both modern singles and in VGC. And it has multiple top cuts at regionals in Generation 9. In A tier, we have Landorus Therian, Pelipper, and Tapu Fini. Landorus' legacy in competitive can't be understated, with it having been the face of both Smogon and OU up until recent generations. And despite its stepping down in usage over time, it remains a powerful and iconic option for both formats. Pelper may have come from nothing, but the tools that it has today have resulted in it being a staple for rain teams in OU and an essential pick for Zamazenta and Calyrex teams in restricted VGC, as well as just straight up other offensive rain teams. Tapu Fini's wide move pool and ability to protect its partners while soaking up hits from the likes of both Urshifu forms makes it a very reliable water type that was on a ton of teams in Generation 7 and 8 and is basically missed by every player in Generation 9. And in S tier, we have Fluttermane and Urshifu Rapid Strike. What is there to say about these two? They're just broken. Fast, powerful, flexible, top 5 in VGC, and straight up banned in Smogon. These two just have it all. If I were to put one over the other though, I'd have to give a slight edge to Urshifu, just because it invalidates so many forms of counterplay with its moves and ability. But that's my list. What do you think are the most powerful Pokemon from each generation today? I'm sure there are some people who would disagree with some of my picks, but just let me know what you would have gone with in the comment section below. And while you're there, Confuse everyone who didn't finish the video by saying that I chose like Mighty Anna or something. I don't know. I like the gag of you guys spreading misinformation in the comments. It's just, it's been fun for the past few videos, so let's keep it up. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Adok V, Avatar67, Halo, Invisibleish, Jordan Harris, Pika Power, Kayla Thompson, and Rager Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos on the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends, and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which will be in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!